So I feel like all of us deal with the, at certain phases in our lives. We deal with singleness. We see a lot of media advising on singleness or talking about singleness, like movies, videos, articles. There's a lot of people with a lot of different opinions on how we should approach being single, how we should view being single, how being, being single should be lived out. With me being a young adult millennial who is a single woman, there were no, there wasn't any media that particularly addressed what I needed and what I saw other people needed. And some media actually misguided me. And so I wanna come on here and talk about that and just talk about clearing some stuff up because there are some people that are still misguided due to the media that is fed to us. We live in a society that somewhat glamorizes singleness. We glamorize being alone and make it seem like it should always be a fun thing. It should be a thing that is looked at as sexy and independent and strong. And if you are lonely, there's something wrong with you because you should be okay, especially us as women. We should be okay in today's society with being alone, with being independent, with not needing a man, with not wanting a man. We should be able to provide for ourselves and just have this sort of very strong, very independent mentality. We're taught different surface level methods of dealing with singleness such as take yourself out on a date, treat yourself, you know, dress up just to look nice for yourself, learn to just spend time alone, just be by yourself, you know, um, doing different things that you enjoy just alone, you know, learning to be alone. This will help you heal. And you know, times that you do want to be with someone, go out with your friends, do different things out with your friends, like, you know, like it's okay to go out. Um, some media, especially, for example, movies, um, in times of singleness, they glamorize sex, um, you know, or just dating around, learning what you like, learning what you don't like. Um, and so to some, it can, it can send, to some, this sort of media can send a sort of message that it's okay to just play the field to just kind of like see what you like and what you don't like and see people as a sense of experimentation and a sense of somewhat using them for their time, using them for their body, using them for their money and sometimes vice versa. And this is the way that you build. And though this is not necessarily easy to hear, it's very real and it's what I've seen in the society that I'm growing up in. So I, I, I never personally acted in the latter part, but I did, I did take some of the advice in that I spent time alone. I went on dates with myself. I treated myself to different things. I would, you know, put it on social media, independent, you know, out by myself. I don't need no man sort of image. And though it was cool, though it made me feel, especially on the surface, independent and good about myself because I was providing for myself, I was doing for myself, I was being my own woman. Inside, I wasn't healed. T.D. Jakes, um, Pastor T.D. Jakes, he had a good analogy that really stuck with me that if we look at ourselves like a house, when we look at ourselves like a house, it somewhat makes sense. So the things that we're talking about, the things that we're taught to do, it's only virtually teaching us to clean up the outside of the house, to make the outside of the house to look really pretty. And the guest approved rooms that we let virtually everyone into, basically on social media, you know, our general friends, we clean that up, we make it look really nice. So the living room looks really nice. The guest bathroom looks really nice. And those are areas of our heart, areas of our image that we allow everyone to see. But we confuse time past and a clean outside appearance with healing when deep down that's not true. Because just because you learn to be alone, just because you take yourself out on dates every week, just because you do all these different remedies, you can still even when you do those things, you could still not be healed 
from what hurt you and you could still not be healed from what's causing you to repeat these same patterns and failed relationships and if you don't take time to really deal with that hurt and to really analyze what happened to, re to really analyze what's going on with you internally and what things you haven't healed from in your past you will repeat these cycles no matter how independent you become no matter how used to being alone you become with yourself and this is what the media wasn't hitting. This is what the media wasn't showing myself and people like me. And it's causing these patterns where people are independent and people know how to be alone and people know how to use other people, but they don't know how to heal from their past. They don't know how to get over pains and hurts that they experience. And so they just cover it up with looking pretty and they cover it up with these glamorized singleness media things and they think it's okay to live like this. And it's not. A lot of times we learn to either cover up this pain or run from it. But true freedom from this pain doesn't come easily. So our willingness to face and address the things that hurt us, to really let ourselves cry, to really let ourselves feel this pain and to really address what is going on, it will allow us to experience a peace and a healing that most don't have because they continue to run from it and they continue to cover up this pain and try to look try to look okay because they they were never taught that it's okay not to be okay the first thing that we have to do just to change our mentality we have to look at this as a glamorized temporary waiting game i feel like that's our mentality a lot for singleness we see it as a waiting game we're just waiting on the right one to come we're just this is just like a waiting period for us and in that period, we want to make ourselves look good just in case they come. You know, we want to go to certain areas to try to place ourselves in the right place for them to come. It's always like in the back of our mind, we're waiting for the, that right one to walk into our lives, to fix all our problems and to make us feel better. When if we continue to look at it like this, we never heal. And even if that person does walk into our lives, we're not healed enough and we're not mature enough to really be able to love them on a level that we are supposed to and that we are meant to. So the first thing is to stop looking at this as a waiting game and look at it as just your life. This is your life at this point and that it's okay to be alone. It's okay to feel lonely. It's okay to feel hurt because this is our time to really heal from it without the distraction of anyone else around us to be, really be able to heal from what has happened to us, from what is going on with us currently, from what we're dealing with currently, and to learn to be our own best friend. Analyzing ourselves. So what do, first just generally addressing what do we need to heal from what do we need to forgive within ourselves and within others that we've been holding in and we've been covering up so basically asking questions like what happened during the relationship what happened before the relationship what do you notice as a pattern in others and in yourself so um, a lot of us, when we break up, we like to see it as their problems, they had problems, they did certain things to us, and in some cases that is true, but there is always a case that whether they did something to you wrong or you did something wrong, that the ultimate problem or there's an ultimate underlying issue within yourself that you have to address because even if they did something wrong, you have to ask yourself why you were attracted to that sort of person. What was it within yourself that attracted you to that person and I guarantee it's something in your past that you never healed from. And if it was you, also the kind of the same thing. What caused you to act like that? What was going on within yourself that you haven't healed from? What happened in your past that you haven't healed from? And only then, only when you analyze yourself enough to really dig deep and find those hard answers, do you begin to heal and, do you, and you'll find that you don't have to repeat that pattern anymore. What can we do to genuinely love ourselves more every day? So we're taught to love ourselves, to be our best friends. We hear this constantly, we hear this all the time, but the things that we're taught are surface level. 
like I said, they address the guest approved areas, the outside of the house. But what about the, the messy parts of the house, the parts that you don't let any, anybody into? How do you begin to clean those up? What can you do every day to love those parts of you more? Two good practices that I've done that have worked for me. One is standing in the mirror and giving yourself love for three straight minutes. So every morning or evening, whenever you have time, standing in a mirror, staring yourself in the eyes, in the face, and telling yourself everything positive about you. And starting with things that you specifically point out as negative. For example, if you hate your hair, if you hate your skin, if you hate your body, tell yourself every day for three minutes straight, I love my body so much. I love who I am so much. I love the person that I am so much. Because only when you start telling yourself that will you start to believe it. Number two is volunteering. When you start thinking about, when you start seeing others whose lives are not as fortunate as you and you start thinking about someone else, it'll help to really build not only your love for yourself, surprisingly, but your confidence because you're becoming a, per a person that volunteers, their heart learns to heal from it. You, you'll find healing and helping other people because we're naturally meant for that. We're beings that are naturally inclined to find joy in helping others. So we learn the meaning of joy and not just happiness. Four is brainstorm ways to date yourself that go beyond the surface. So not just dinner and a movie, not just um, actually a lot of times either we go out to dinner or we go out to a movie as single people. So though these things are good, they're a good way to start out. Think of it in terms of a relationship. If you're actually in a relationship with someone, yeah, going out to these places are nice, but eventually it will get old and it will get tiring. You'll want to start getting to know them on a deeper level. You won't just want to go out to dinner and a movie all the time. You won't just want to go out to do these fun things all the time. Though they are fun, though they are enjoyable, you have to get to know them in order to deepen the relationship. The same is true for ourselves. When we're in a relationship with ourselves, it's our responsibility to not only have fun, but to go on a deeper level with ourselves. So don't just sit and watch Netflix all the time in your alone time. Don't just sit and go to the movies or try to do things that are fun, but really have deep conversations with yourself. The same way that you would want a relationship to go with someone else, think about that in terms of yourself. So all of us have a list of things that we require in someone else. Some people's lists are longer than others, but we have laundry list of what I would want in my perfect man or what I would want in my perfect woman. Have you become that person? How have you not become that person? And really be honest with yourself and really think about it and think about ways to work, to work on it. For example, a lot of us say we want someone that is understanding. Well, are you an understanding person? Do you take the time to be patient when you could easily be mad? Do you take the time to really ask why as opposed to jumping to conclusions and getting upset? These are important because you can't attract what you don't have. The person, the sort of person that you want will only come to you when you level up to become that person yourself. So taking time to really think about these habits is so crucial if you really want that sort of person in your life. But again, back to number one, we're not even thinking about them walking into our lives at this point because we're becoming so we're becoming so obsessed with the healing and the betterment of ourselves that whether they come into our lives or not, it doesn't matter because we have that true joy and we have that genuine love. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this helped. Um, if this resonated with you in any way, please don't forget to like or subscribe and I hope you have an amazing day or night.